women injured by the IUD. A federal judge said that as the amount A.H. Robbins, the manufacturer of the device, will pay to the 200,000 claimants in the case. Lawyers for the defendants initially requested much more than that, $7.1 billion. The company hopes to pay out the claims over the next seven years. Well, some experts say immunization is a success story of the decade. <clears throat> Pardon me, 10 years ago, less than 5% of the developing world's infants were vaccinated against diseases. This year, immunization has reached 50%. While the increase is a good sign, the United Nations Children's Fund believes that percentage could be higher. News 8's Ruth Ann Gordon has more on a report that was recently released and how the message has been brought home to one county. One death in every three in the world is the death of a child under the age of five. These are scenes from a videotape used by UNICEF to show their immunization campaign in Colombia. According to their reports, more than a quarter of a million young children still die in the developing world from malnutrition and disease. Connie Schleffler, a nurse and missionary, has seen the problem firsthand. In Nigeria alone, where I've lived for the last eight years, over 500 children under the age of five die due to preventable childhood diseases. They die every day from measles, from whooping cough, from tetanus, things that should not occur anymore. Schleffler was speaking on behalf of UNICEF's work in underdeveloped countries, but others talked of similar problems here at home. We have such wealth, we have such caring, we have such talent in our community, and yet not only do we have problem with the immunization, we have problem with providing health care to the working poor families. You get one shot, and that shot lasts about three or four years. Gets them past the time when they're likely to have meningitis. Monroe County is at the bottom of the list of counties here in our state in terms of numbers of children immunized. The reasons for the low numbers are varied. There's a segment of the parent population that I think could be labeled irresponsible. They're not against immunizations, they just don't bother to immunize their children. To a large extent, many of these parents were never immunized as young people either, and many of them are not immunized yet. The Public Health Nursing Association in that county set up special immunization clinics last summer to try and tackle the problem. The group hopes to set up more clinics next year. Ruth Ann Gordon, Wish TV, News 8. Coming up next, Ed Harding has sports after this. They say a little dab will do you. What's she be doing? But this is the week the Hollywood Squares would rather make a big splash. Well, in that case, babe, it's war. <laughs> Look out. It's bombs away. Just missing Isabel Sanford and Phyllis Diller. Well, you know, I was never miss anything. Plus a fast break, a sudden slam, and before you know it, everybody's ready to take a free shot. Do you believe it? Those cut-ups, the Hollywood Squares. Tonight at 7.30 on Wish TV. Old man winter is already battering many parts of the United States. So the time to get to Burlington Coat Factory is now. For the first choice of the largest selection of winter coats and jackets in the country. What every member of your family needs to keep warm, no matter how cold it gets. And because Burlington is famous for low prices, you can get your new winter coat at the lowest price imaginable. That should make you feel warm all over. Burlington Coat Factory, America's number one place to save on the coat you want. This Christmas, Hardee's is spreading a lot of cheer for just a little money because you can get your little elves a regular hamburger, fries, and a small soft drink for just a dollar. You can even get that last-minute stocking stuffer with an adorable, adoptable baby pound puppy or purry. So stop by Hardee's this holiday season. You'll get a lot of Christmas cheer for just a dollar and the perfect stocking stuffer at a special price because at Hardee's, we're out to win you over. In this Abruzzi region of central Italy comes the inspiration for a hearty beef and pork pasta sauce called Classico d'Abruzzi. And because in Italy pasta sauces differ from region to region, from Naples there's a robust tomato and basil Classico di Napoli. And from Sicily, a zesty ripe olive and mushroom Classico di Sicilia. The regional tastes of Italy brought to America. Classico, authentic regional pasta sauces. A couple of years ago, somebody would have said, hey, you know that Colts-Bills uh, game yeah. in December of 1987 yeah. is going to decide the league championship? Yeah. They would have put you away for a while. Not just a couple of years ago, one year ago. Yeah, that's yeah. true, too. Imagine what people said one year ago. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? This game, by the way, this weekend has been sold out here in the Dome, but it will not be on local television. 
also not in uniform for the game, Walter Murray, who is inactive for the Buffalo Bill game. He's a wide receiver. The Colts will activate only two quarterbacks. Jack Trudeau will start. Sean Salisbury will back him up. Ron Meyer is gambling. He's also beefing up his defense. I wanted to get additional special team strength, and I also wanted to uh, add additional defensive strength with both our defensive line and our secondary being nicked up in certain areas and certain degrees. In case you're wondering, John Hand will not start at defensive end, although he will play a lot. Harvey Armstrong will start at defensive end against Buffalo. And Roy Banks is active. He is a rookie wide receiver who hasn't played this year. He has been injured. Interesting visitor at the Colts facility today. He had a hand in the player's strike back in September. The man in town today, Gene Upshaw, to give a pep talk to the Colt players, to tell them to pay their dues, to tell them to stay in the union. I asked him, how can he look the players in the eye and say they did anything but lose this strike? The executive committee, well, because the game is not over. I mean, it's like saying uh, we played the first quarter and uh, the game is over. The game is not over. I mean, we're, we're constantly getting victories as we go down uh, the track here. I mean, uh, you look at what happened with the NLRB giving us a complaint on the back pay order. Uh, we have a case in court. It's an antitrust case, which is triple damages. Uh, we feel very strongly about uh, our cases, and we feel that they can be successful. If you're wondering what kind of dues that a player in the union would pay in this strike year, 2000 bucks is what they're asking for. Upshaw, by the way, has no intention of stepping down as executive director of the NFLPA. There has been a major three-team deal in baseball. Name players changing addresses. The first named player, left-handed relief pitcher Jesse Orozco, leaving the Mets, and he goes to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Orozco didn't get the numbers he normally gets last year, but the Dodgers expect him to be their left-handed stopper out of the pen. The other big name of the move, Dodger right-hander Bob Welsh. He was 15-9 and nine last year. He goes to Oakland. Remember, this is a three-team deal, so Bob Welsh goes to Oakland. He's a guy that won 15 games for a team that was barely better than most minor league teams. The Mets, for their part, end up with three minor league pitchers, so Orozco has left New York. You know what surprises me about all of this is, obviously Bob Welsh was available. The Cubs get Al Nipper and Calvin Schiraldi, and they give up Lee Smith. And the Reds give up Dave Parker and get Jose Rio and Tim Burtzis. And Welsh was available. The Pacers beat up on the Mets last night. Honestly, New Jersey's pathetic. I mean, they barely are better than half the CBA teams. Pearl Washington in the home white. Takes the ball on a one-on-three. Look what he does with the ball. Whoop, whoop. Goes out of bounds off his leg. Oh, well. Such is life. Skiles directing the offense smartly here. Sees the man open as Tisdale driving to the goal. Wayman with a left-hand jam. Watch Reggie Miller. He wants the ball more than Otis Birdsong. He gets it, beats his man, and Birdsong says, mm. Stepanovich, watch the step here. Watch the step by Stepanovich. He looks inside and then steps outside right around Jaminski. And the Pacer win by 18. Big league move. By the way, I'm sure you'd be curious of this. Ray Tolbert was waived by the New York Knickerbockers earlier last week. He has been asked to come to Los Angeles. He will play for the Los Angeles Lakers, at least as of the moment. It's a good move for Ray. IU Classic. The Hoosiers play James, don't call me, Dolly, Madison, in Game 1 down in Bloomington tonight, and then Indiana State plays Washington State in Game 2 of the Classic. How's this for a shot? High school basketball happens out west. Now, this is an afternoon game. You can see by the door open and the sunshine coming in. The team in the dark uniform just inbounds the ball. Look at this kid. <laughs> Throw it just bang. Yeah. Huh? Better to be lucky than good half the time, huh? And we can't let this evening pass without another performance, an encore, if you will, from that thrilling Richmond Muncie Central game last night. Ivan Gratz has the highlights that I, I know you've already seen. You want to see him again in white as Rich, Richmond. Rebound jump hook by Andy Gadosh. Smart position for the offensive board. He gets the putback. Steal and the stuff by Chandler Thompson of Muncie Central. It's a magnificent game. Austin with a three-pointer. You talk about your Mr. Basketball candidates. You want to see how these guys perform in the clutch. Austin performed very well for George Griffith in the clutch last night. Gaydosh gets the rebound off the Muncie Central Mitch miss, and Austin gets the jumper. In overtime, Austin scored all the points for Richmond. Richmond won the game by six. Terrific way to begin a, a great weekend of high school basketball. Boy, he is a good, fun. isn't he? He's, oh, he's got, such a, he's he's got such a, a smooth touch to when he gets on the floor. And he, great position, and he's got the awareness, knowing if he needs a three-point, he pulls up. Uh, yeah, very fun game to watch. Thanks, Ed. Coming up, some advice from our Money Pro on how to start saving now for tax time. After that. Contrary to the rumor that's been going around,
the Hyundai Excel does need to be brought into the shop once in a while. The dependable Excel from Hyundai. Cars that make sense. Corn growers around here know Counter gives you more. More rootworm control. More root mass. More corn. And Counter in furrow gives you more protection where it's needed most. Counter consistently outperforms every other rootworm insecticide. And you can't afford a performance gap. So get more of what you use an insecticide for. Get Counter at your local AgriCenter dealer. Imagine how good it would feel to be regular for the rest of your life. Time to run, boy? You could be. Irregularity is often due to a lack of fiber, and doctors recommend Metamucil fiber by name. They know how effective use of natural Metamucil can be. Ask your doctor. Maybe Sparky would like to sleep in this morning. <laughs> Metamucil, and you could be regular for the rest of your life. She is the one who won my heart I knew she had something special from the very start She is so beautiful to me Vincent's naturally Natural beauty and natural class Everybody looks away when she walks past She is so beautiful the Internal Revenue Service says the scandal-plagued PTL ministry could owe the government as much as $82 million in taxes. In October, PTL said it only owed the government $5 million, but in a filing with a bankruptcy court overseeing PTL, the IRS claims it has owed either $62 million or $82 million, depending on whether the tax-exempt status of PTL's ministry is upheld. Well, believe it or not, it is time to get prepared for Uncle Sam, and there are some moves you can make right now to save on this year's tax bill. As our money pro Steve Crowley explains, it may be time to get rid of some of the losing investments, that is, if you also have gains. If the crash didn't scare you into selling your losing stocks and mutual funds, maybe the new tax laws will. By selling losers, we can turn part of our losses into tax savings. Do you have any capital gains this year? We can offset them dollar for dollar with our losses. When we sell, that could be smart since this year all our capital gains are subject to tax. Last year and before, only 40% of long-term gains got hit with income tax. Plus, the highest tax rate for this year's capital gains is 28%. Next year climbs as high as 33%. And whenever we sell losing stocks or mutual funds, we can write off up to $3,000 of losses against our other income. More than that, we can carry the losses forward to future years. Then, are you too busy to think about selling? Think about this. You'll save a lot of money in taxes if you do it now before the end of the year. That's because almost everyone's tax rate will drop in 1988, making the losses worth more this year. One of the easiest ways to create losses, switch money from a mutual fund that's dropped in value into another better fund. Mutual fund specialist Michael McLean says that's a smart tax technique to take advantage of now. It's an effective technique. It will create the tax loss, no question about that. And given, uh, given the right circumstances, and in that I mean the client moves from, from one fund to another fund and it's the correct fund for them, it's a good idea. And if you bought mutual fund shares in a family of different funds but haven't set up phone switching privileges, do it by the end of this year. Many funds have toll-free 800 numbers. Call up, ask about specific rules for switching within the family of funds. But never sell out just for income tax reasons alone. Make sure you want to sell. Would you like a free copy of Tax Tips for Your Investments? Just write me here at the station and please send us your self-addressed stamped envelope. I'm Steve Crowley with your Money Report. And here's the address for Steve Crowley, Money Pro News, Wish TV, Post Office Box 7088, Indianapolis 46207. Well, it's hard to think about taxes when you're unemployed. Helping the jobless return to the workforce is why we present Job Track. Norell Healthcare, the leader in first quality health services and the largest agency in the country, needs RNs, LPNs, and nurse aides. Requirements are one to two years recent experience either with a health facility or in home care. Norell offers top pay, bonuses, vacation, holiday, and birthday pay, malpractice insurance, tuition reimbursement, profit sharing, and flexible hours. Norell also serves the Greenwood, Anderson, and Columbus areas. We are open 24 hours, seven days per week. Thank you. 
For more information, call 232-JOBS. Here's a special home gift idea from Levitt's greatest Christmas sale. Check the dozens and dozens of bargains in Levitt's Circular or visit the Levitt's near you today. Friday and Saturday, it's Moonlight Madness in Value City. We're saving so big, so spectacular, it'll blow your mind. Boys, they buy corduroy jeans, not $19, only $7.99. Boys, famous Baker long sleeve woven sports shirts, not $18, only $3.99. Our entire stock of children's shoes, buy one pair at our everyday low prices, get the second pair half price. Twin size kid comforters, not $35, only $17.99. Hurry in while quantities last. Shop tonight till midnight, tomorrow till 10. The Moonlight Madness sale at all Value City department stores. So what's little dandruff? Okay, imagine you're at the social event of the year and your dream girl says hello, just as you do this. Her first impression? What a hunk, and only a few flakes. <laughs> Give me a break. The breaks are, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So? So regular shampoos won't fix your problem. Try this. Head and shoulders? Well, you don't have dandruff. Bingo. Head and shoulders, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Listen to the heartbeat. I mean, I consider it the Nova of the 80s. It has nothing to do with the old Nova. I mean, basically, just like the name, and they just kept it. So, I mean, the car that oh, your grandmother and all used to ride around in, that's dead. So this <laughs> is the new Nova. This is Chevy's new Nova Twin Cam with a new 16-valve engine. What happens when you step on the gas? <laughs> A number of historic documents missing for half a century have been recovered by the state. The papers date from 1810 and include one bearing the rare signature of William Henry Harrison. They are back with the Indiana Commission on Public Records. Commission director says officials agreed to the anonymous donation of the papers to encourage other people who find state documents to bring them forward. Well, if you have a family dog, then you probably know it's not unusual to hear most dogs enjoy riding in the family car. But what about riding on top of the car? Now, that is unusual, as you'll see in this next report. Like a cat with catnip, dogs are infatuated with cars. They chase them and love to ride, especially if you let them stick their heads out the window. Maybe they like the wind rushing through their hair, or maybe they enjoy having all that power at their paws. But whatever it is that makes dogs love cars, Mariah has a bad case of it. When he gets up there, his spirits are really lifted. He'd just much rather ride up there than in the back seat. As soon as I get in the car and he's outside, he'll hop right on top. Good job. Okay. Let's go. He's always been a climber, and it's just one day he climbed on top of the car, and ever since then, it's, it's been a tradition. Mariah's been riding by rooftop for 12 years now, and he's quite good at it. His little paws can hold firm at speeds nearing 35 miles an hour, and never a slip, unless you count that squirrel. When he first was learning to do it, he did see a squirrel and went from the top of the car to the hood. I saw that, hit the brakes, and he just rolled right off, but he wasn't injured. He's never been injured, but the family cars have seen their fair share of abuse. I don't like it. He gets footprints all over the hood. Mrs. Griswold says she has a hard time explaining the footprints to her friends. She says it's embarrassing. Well, thank goodness her friends have never seen this. 72 cents the first window, please put them. People say, hey, there's a dog on top of your car. So I just you know, play it off like, oh, well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Obviously, Mariah will ride the roof on any road to anywhere. Well, I take that back. Almost anywhere. I wonder where you got that. You want fries with that? No, a little <laughs> Alpo would be okay. A little Alpo, yes. Uh, back with the final story after this. to America. It's not just men who farm our land, but also more than a million farm women who work as their partners to make America's food system one of the most productive on earth. That's something we shouldn't take for granted. This message brought to you on behalf of the American farmer by the makers of dual herbicide. While thousands of people shop at Cub Foods, there are still some of you who don't. 
even though we've told you about Cubs' assured minimum pricing and that you can save hundreds of dollars a year on your total food bill, not to mention quality and selection like you've never seen. So why haven't you switched to Cub Foods? Perhaps we forgot to say, please. Cub Foods, it's a new way to run a supermarket. You're going to love Christmas shopping at Coral Super Saturday. Take 25% off all our soft, cuddly plush and save $120 on this GE 20-inch color TV with remote control. Think of all the money you'll save on Christmas gifts. Get 30% off young men's 100% cotton woven shirts. We're talking gifts for Christmas at Super Saturday Savings. Cold Super Saturday starts tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. It's going to be a great Christmas. The totally new Buick Regal. There's nothing like it on the American road. Out on the horizon, the heart of a Buick, the start of a Regal new day. The great American road belongs to Buick. It's your Regal reward. It's the way it should be in this Regal American land. See your Central Indiana Best Buy Buick dealer today. Time now to check in with Dan Rather for details on what's ahead on the CBS Evening News. On tonight's CBS Evening News, President Reagan meets with Congress in the press, kicking off his new campaign to sell his summit agreement with Soviet leader Gorbachev. We'll have an update on the remarkable recovery of Alvaro Garza, the boy who survived more than 40 minutes under frigid water. And violinist Yasha Heifetz is dead. Correspondent Charles Osgood will be along with an appreciation of the musician legendary even among fellow virtuosos. These stories and more coming up here soon, so stay with us. And from Dan to Stan for a quick look at our weather again. And Tina, those slight showers down in southeastern Indiana are moving rapidly out of the picture, so we're calling on our shortcast tonight for clearing skies. Overnight low about 33, some sunshine, but it's going to be windy tomorrow with a high of 41. So, gang, tomorrow will be a turn-up-your-coat collar kind of a day, I think. Okay, Stan, thank you. Story between the scenes now. Well, let's hope the summit was a success, because as far as Marja Bell Young Stewart is concerned, it was not a good show. Marja Bell is an etiquette expert, and she says, this really was gauche. You don't see anything wrong here? Well, says Marja Bell, look at the way President Reagan is holding his champagne glass. Everyone, she says, knows that you toast your guest by holding the glass at the stem, not the bowl. As for Gorbachev's blue suit at a black tie dinner, well, Marja Bell says she won't even go into that. Uh -huh. Let's hope not. She's had a pretty rough week so far. Hasn't that it? was devastating, seeing yeah, so that. Was. It, it was very bothersome. Ruined the whole thing for <laughs> Yes, indeed. That's all for tonight. I'm Tina Cosby. I'm Mike Ahern. Thanks for joining us. Dan Rather's next. We'll see you again tonight at 11 o'clock.